Okay, so we are going to go over the results for 5550-2224 East Michigan Street with you. Just got a couple of things. The building looks really good. The area looks very well maintained. Everything surrounding the subject property looks very good. That's usually a good um, determination or determining factor for me coming in to look around to see how well maintained or a lack of maintenance there is for any building. So and upon coming in, I didn't have any major concerns about water penetration and things of that nature. And that pretty much played out and confirmed to be true. There doesn't seem to be any leakage from any areas on top, the walls, or anything like that. Uh, the first thing I looked at when I came here was the electrical. There is a service disconnect room in the breezeway downstairs. I think there's several rooms because there's so many buildings. But yours is located on the east side. And your service disconnect is 125 amps. All that is is a, a one breaker that turns off all the power to your unit specifically. And the reason they have that is for the fire department more than anything else in case there's an issue and they have to cut the power. The second reason you have that is once you're here and you're living here, you can go to your management company and you can say, I'm going to do some electrical work in my unit and I would like to shut my power off. They will walk you to the room. They will show you where the breaker is. You shut the one breaker off and then you can safely have someone work in here on electrical. I looked at that and that looked fine. I also looked at the electrical panel which is in the hallway to my left and that looks good as well. The electrical wiring inside the panel was, was uh, examined. You have copper branch wiring and aluminum coming in which is the main wiring which is exactly what it should be. I did an infrared scan which is nothing more than just determining if the temperatures inside the panel are operating within normal range, and they are. I also checked the bathroom and the kitchen areas for ground fault protection. Those are the receptacles that have the push buttons in them, like this one to the right of the range, okay? And they're required to be in areas where there's water, and you do have them in the kitchen and the bathroom. So overall, electrically, things turned out very well. The next thing I looked at was the air conditioning system, which is located to the back corner of the living room, there's a, a louver door. Behind the louver door is We're your here. one unit. The one unit in there is a package system. It has a compressor and an evaporator inside of one uh, cabinet. And what that does is it provides cooling and heating for your, for your unit. So if you set your thermostat to cool, you don't have a unit outside that people traditionally associate with an HVAC system that comes on your unit is in that closet. And when you run the heat, the same thing. Your one unit is in that closet. I checked airflow at the vents and the ceilings to make sure that we had the right temperatures coming out and we did, both in cool and in heat. I also checked for a pass-through uh, duct somewhere or vent somewhere in the, in the building inside your unit to make sure you had uh, intake air coming properly. And there is one on the left side living room wall that you'll also see shares the bedroom wall. Uh, inside, I check plumbing. I like to check plumbing by running the water for a little while, repeatedly flushing the toilet and using the shower and just kind of operating it from shower mode to faucet mode. I did that in the bathroom and I did that in the kitchen. And the results of that are when we have some repairs. Now, none, none of these things are considered major repairs, but they're necessary because when you live here, if you're going to use the sink, for example, in the kitchen, you're going to have a problem because there's a minor leak there. So if you're not aware of it and you don't expect it, you could use it for days before anything shows up and you'll start to see damage. So the first repair is a leak at the faucet fixture. The second repair is a leak at the sprayer. And the third repair is a leak at the filtration system right here that's on the end of the faucet. The nice thing about having this particular problem is with one replacement, you can make pretty much all those repairs at one time. So if you pick a fixture that you like, just swap this out for the new one, and that should uh, eliminate the problems you're having with the faucet. The second thing that we had a problem with here was the garbage disposal. That does not work. It has a little bit of rust on it, and I anticipate that you're not going to be able to get that to come back on again. And if you do, it won't be long before you have to replace it. So that would be the next repair. They're normally not very expensive, and typically you can get one for under $300 installed most of the time. Uh, there are two other repairs with the plumbing. Uh, since we're going to uh, be explaining where, I'm going to show you, because that would probably be better. 
um, at the water heater in the back of the closet. A couple of things that now this these are also not very big repairs, but they're important ones, and I'll tell you why. The first one, this is the main shutoff valve for the um, for the whole the bathroom and the kitchen for the water. It's leaking. Okay, little tiny drops coming out of there at a time. And you cannot turn this. It does not shut the water off all the way. So having said that, this part would have to be replaced, which is easy to do. The second thing is that valve over there is also not working. That's not leaking, but it's not working. That's to shut the water off to the tank in the event of a repair or, or you're gonna um, flush it out and service it. Those two valves can be replaced rather easily. Um, but those are the extent of the repairs that we have. Okay. Um, otherwise, I think that the unit looks really good. Um, and I don't anticipate any big surprises based on what I've seen so far. Okay. All right. And so that's basically it? Yeah, it's basically it. Just have, uh, call me with any questions. I'm talking to you. I'm forgetting you're doing this video thing. Call me if you have any questions. <laughs> I'll have the report emailed over sometime later tonight. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you.